Hi, Grüezi and welcome to another FSD Beta QuickBits video. This is version 10.1. I've been using this now for about a week since my initial impression video. I'm going to put a link to that uh, video up in the upper right corner. And today we're going to do some driving in the city, in city environments. And I'm going to highlight a couple of things that I've noticed that are typical in my environment, in my drives. Some good stuff and also some bad stuff. Let's go. First situation here I want to show is a driving on an unmarked, freshly paved road where there is only, as you can see here, these like little dots every now and then. And I was surprised how well uh, Beta is actually doing with this. So you can see here, even with not that many cars around, the car is um, doing a good job in kind of keeping its lane, even though there is no lane. So that's what that was good to see. Um, we're going to have another look here. This is from a marked road turning left into the unmarked road here. And you can see the car is actually doing a pretty nice job, even though there is no lane lines or anything. It kind of wears a little bit, but then really finds its um, lane and it's doing so pretty well. I have to say, even as a human driver, um, sometimes, and you can tell also by auto drivers on the street, it's kind of confusing. So that was great to see. Next up, we're going to see here a left turn scenario, unprotected. So the car is actually doing a beautiful job. It's waiting here. There is a couple of cars that it has to wait for. And uh, once these bikes and these uh, three other cars here actually pass, we already start going now. So this is actually very good, very natural. Really good job and then a really terrible job right after that. So the car turns into the oncoming lane here. And this is one of the things, right? So. You know, the car is doing a great job in some situations and then can mess up in others, which again, I just want to highlight that. I know there's going to be additional testers coming up. Um, just be really, really aware of that. The car can do a great job all the time and then it messes up when you maybe least expect it because it was working quite well in the past. So this is just another reminder. The next observation, which I think has even a little bit more improved now with version 10.1 than it already did in previous versions, uh, is the merging and the, let's say, more intelligent lane change uh, logic. I'm not saying that it always does a great um, and smart decision on when to change lanes. There is actually a lot of times where there are unnecessary lane changes. But here is an example. Look at how it's squeezing in. It's kind of hesitant a little bit, but then as soon as the gap is really big enough, it squeezes in because we have to turn right in some time. And I think I really like that because um, otherwise, especially in city uh, driving, you will never make your turn if you are not a little bit more aggressive and squeeze in if necessary, because that's also how human drivers drive, right? So um, I'm happy to see that a little bit more on the aggressive side here. Still safe, um, but a little bit more on the aggressive side. And now we're actually coming up to that right turn for which we have to be in the rightmost lane. So I think very good timing, very good execution of that planning. And then here a little bit of a slowing down unnecessarily. I'm not sure, maybe because of that car to the right. But that's generally something that I've noticed, which is actually not a good development, I would say, from my perspective. The car seems to be a little bit more intimidated at times. It's like, a, you know, mini brakes where I don't really get what the reason is. But it's for sure not the right thing to do, especially in city driving where you have all bumper to bumper traffic and the person behind you might be surprised if you slow down for no apparent reason at all. So that's certainly a feedback I've given to the team and um, hopefully that's going to get better with the next version. I'm going to continue to play this clip. It's another maybe 30 seconds until the end of the section just so you can get maybe also a little bit the feeling of how uh, the car behaves in city driving. There's a couple of uh, good maneuvers here turning to the right on a green light and then we have to actually move over. Here it's going into the HOV lane and then, you know, kind of makes its lane change out of it and immediately to the left here. And then we got to wait for oncoming traffic. And this is actually, again, similar to the previous scene where we have to wait and then the car actually moves early. So this is actually borderline. It starts moving here. And it, for my taste, this was pretty close. So it cut the corner there pretty close, but it was okay. And again, quite a natural uh, behavior, I would say here. Now I've mentioned before that sometimes the lane changes don't make sense. And here is an example of one of such lane changes. We have to go straight for quite some time. And the car at this point comes to a red light. And for whatever reason, 
it decides it doesn't want to go next to this police car, but instead squeeze in behind it. And there was actually a car in the back, um, in the right lane, as well as in the lane that I was coming from. So it's an unnecessary maneuver at this point, but it was done well and safely, so I guess it's okay. Still some room to improve. And unlike the previous lane change, the next upcoming one here is, is actually necessary, but it's actually planned very well again. So you can see on the navigation we have a left turn upcoming in 0.3 miles and the car knows that it has to go here into the left lane. There's a car coming in the left lane from behind so it cannot go yet. The car in front goes to the right and now we decide to turn into the left lane. A very natural move here and we are in the correct lane for the upcoming left turn. So that was good example of planning ahead. Now this is an example of where this planning didn't go well and it's actually on navigate on autopilot. We have to take the exit that's coming up here and you can see this is now navigate on autopilot trying to change lane to take the exit which is actually coming up now. There is a car on the right hand side that just doesn't care that I actually want to go right here and my car is not aggressive enough in either accelerating or braking to get behind and we're missing the exit. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this here is in my last video I was talking about a single stack and there was a comment from someone saying, you know, what does single stack actually mean? So right now we have two kind of pieces of code that decide how the car is driving on beta and on navigate and autopilot on the highway. And the goal of a single stack is that these two things are combined into one and the car can use the same logic for both situations and scenarios. So my hope is that the um, navigate on autopilot logic would get a bit uh, more aggressive and would be more capable of handling situations like this one than it currently is. So hopefully that single stack or that merge of that stack will actually get in the better of both worlds. So in this case, hopefully the navigate on autopilot logic will be able to use a bit more aggressive and more assertive logic to change lanes when necessary and plan ahead as well. Talking about planning ahead, upcoming here is a scenario which unfortunately happens more often now in this version for me than in previous versions. We are here approaching an intersection where navigation routes clearly go straight, but if you look at the planning on the tentacle, the green one, it wants the car to turn right. And that catches me by surprise and I have to take over because I don't want to turn right here. I want to follow the navigation and go straight. So this is one of the things that I've noticed, unfortunately, that have regressed for me that the car for no apparent reason decides to ignore navigation and do a turn on its own. Again, talking about being alert and uh, observant at all times. Next up, we are waiting here at the red light. We have to go straight. And in front here on the right lane where I'm going, you can see here there is a truck that is stopped. I'm just pausing the video here and highlighting that. And the car actually seems to see that and immediately decides to do a lane change to the left pass that truck which is in the way and then immediately afterwards turn back to the right lane where we have to be because there is an upcoming right turn. There is a pedestrian walking around that car. My car slows down and actually moves to the side a little bit for that pedestrian. So that was a very good move. The last thing I want to show in today's video is actually a scene which is uh, quite typical and happens quite often where the car is overly cautious. And oftentimes it's the reason why I actually hit the accelerator, so the car actually um, continues with its, its maneuver. So here we're coming to a stop sign and there is actually no traffic um, the whole time here during this scene. And the car stops and, you know, you can see the steering wheel moving, slowly creeping forward, actually creeping halfway into the street and only then decides to go. Now. You know, it takes about 8 to 10 seconds to complete this maneuver. And I understand, you know, you want to be on the safe side with the car. But usually, you know, I let this play out because there was no car behind me. But one issue that I can see coming up with more and more of uh, Tesla FST beta versions being on the road is that you become um, a nuisance to others because nobody really understands why you wait at the intersection that is absolutely clear for that long. So getting that tuning right, um, I could imagine, is pretty difficult. Uh, tuning between being on the safe side um, and you know doing things slowly, 
but also doing it confidently when you're absolutely sure and it's okay to uh, go into intersections a little bit faster, for example. So hopefully you like this video today. Um, maybe some of these things that I've highlighted, which I found to be uh, either regressing or not improved yet, might be better in the next version 10.2, which is supposed to be dropping on October 9. And this is also as far as we understand now, the version where the additional beta testers will be onboarded. So an exciting weekend coming up. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, hitting that bell to get notified when the next video is uploaded. And as always, if there's any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'm happy to try to answer them. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.